Taking care of your treasures is really very easy. There's only a couple of things that you need to know about doing that. Um, maybe three or four things, but nothing really desperate. It's all really easy. Um, one of the first things that you need to do is realize that you shouldn't be displaying it in your house by a hot window or by something that's really hot, like on a register or close to where the heat comes out. Uh, heat is not really friendly to either wood or ivory, okay? So when you go home, look around and see where you've got baskets stashed and make sure that, you know, that doesn't like get all afternoon sun. Uh, because it'll dry it out. It dries out the wood and it will dry out the ivory. So watch out for where you have it stored. So that's kind of my first tip is uh, be careful where you keep the thing. You don't have to keep it in a closet. You don't have to hide it away. But just be careful that it's not setting, like I said, close to a heat register or right in the direct sun or somewhere where it's going to get a lot of hot. Or cold. Okay, so the heat, the temperature changes are something that doesn't set really well with um, the basket parts. Other than that, there's not too much that can hurt them, you know. Um, and yes, they get dirty and that, you know, but that's an easy thing to take care of. Most of the baskets are finished with either shellac or some kind of polyurethane now, the newer ones. And so what happens to them? They get dust, at my house anyway, and they get oil from your hands, okay? So how are we gonna clean them? Well, that's really simple. You just need a few little simple tools, okay? I even brought some to show you. How about an old toothbrush or a paintbrush? You know, just an old dry paintbrush, that works. Some kind of a toothbrush, that works, okay? Um, even a little brush, you know, like a soft, sort of a medium bristle brush. And so what you would do then, if you have dust, there's room here, um, if you have uh, lots of dirt in the thing, just gently give it a brushing, okay? That gets out most of the dirt in the weaving part of your basket. Um, if it is really bad, you can use, I mean really bad, okay? You can use like some ivory soap and just a little bit of it to put with that. You know, make yourself a little cup, put like two drops of ivory soap in one cup of warm water and take your toothbrush and just dip in the water and gently give that dust and dirt a scrub and then immediately dry it out. Okay, don't, don't let the water sit there. And if you have ivory, no water on the ivory. Okay, what water, alcohol, any kind of liquid will do on your ivory is take the shine away. And you know those basket makers and scrim shanders worked really hard to polish that piece of ivory. So you wanna keep that polished. And the other thing is about water or, like I said, alcohol. If you get caught in a rainstorm, you know, protect that thing. Hide it. Some people I know actually carry around a plastic bag or a shower cap to stick over their purse if they get stuck out in the rain because ivory really doesn't like to get wet. It, you know, it, it can be fixed, but it doesn't like it. So if you can avoid it, that's a good thing to do. All right? So that's a couple of simple things. The other thing, a couple of other simple tools that you can use. Supposing you have a carving on your basket and it's really dirty, okay? What are you gonna use? Well, I like to use these little fingernail things, the orange sticks, I think they call them. And you just take the end of that and grab a piece of paper towel Give it a wrap around there. And then you can very carefully get in around your carving and clean. The other thing that works is toothpicks. Okay, so take that toothpick, wrap it around to just a little piece of paper, Kleenex or a paper towel, 
and get in there and try to work on some of that dirt. All right. There, then what the other thing that happens is um, you can wax it. Now the old time folks always used butcher's wax, okay? Butcher's wax is a floor wax or a bowling alley wax and it has no cleaner in it. That's the secret, a wax with no cleaner. So it's just pure wax. It'll tell you on the package. If you're using butcher's wax, then what you do is, again, I always keep a piece of sock, old sock in here, leave that in there all the time, and then when you get that out, it's all full of wax already. Just rub it on, and the butcher's wax can go on the wood as well as on your ivory, on the handle, on the base, inside and out. And then with butcher's wax, you put it on, you wait a couple of minutes, and then you buff it off with a clean cloth or with a paper towel, okay? The newest kind of wax are called Renaissance wax. Renaissance wax is available through um, museums, uh, a lot of museums, but what most of us do in the basket trade here is we get it from Woodcraft magazine. Comes in a couple different sizes. This small size is probably a lifetime's worth, okay? The butcher's wax I've had for at least 20 years. This one I know I've had for at least 15 years, but you know, here's my piece of sock and I still have over half a can. All right, so you're just gonna put it on, and this one you buff off immediately. So rub it on. If you need a little bit on the end of that Q, uh, orange stick or Q-tip to get in around your carvings, just gently do that. You don't wanna scratch your ivory, you just wanna gently get in there with a little tiny bit of wax on a piece of paper and clean off the dirt. And then once you get it done, do that and polish it. The thing I really like to polish with, besides paper towels, is a piece of t-shirt, an old shirt. Or if you have it, a piece of wool. Like if you have an old wool skirt that you don't mind parting with, um, it makes a great buff. Or um, a piece of uh, lamb's wool or sheep's hide will work really good because it's got a little bit of lanolin in it, so that works good. But just put it in and buff it off. That's all there is to it. It's really, really simple. All right, the other important thing about taking care of baskets are the hinges. If you don't know, the hinges are a piece of leather that is wrapped with cane, okay? So a most uh, standard basket would have the front two here and four in the back. Sometimes they have two, depends on how it's hinged, or just one that goes in and out this way. But they're almost exclusively made with a piece of leather wrapped with cane, okay? And what happens with leather when it hangs around in the air is it dry rots, okay? It gets dry and it breaks, all right? So what I wanna do is try to, I'm, I'm gonna try to hold this up so that you can see it, but I wanna show you, I'm gonna give you a lesson on how to do this. So what you wanna do is get a paper towel or an old towel you don't care about and lay it down and open up your basket and lay it like this. Okay, so that you can see all the hinges that you're get, getting ready to work on. All right, basket oil is needs foot oil, N-E-A-D-S foot oil. It's a product that's been used for years and years by horse people who have saddles and leather products, any kind of leather products. It, it's a, um, a oil, if you were here years ago, the basket makers used whale oil. We don't have that anymore, but Needs Foot Oil works really great. Usually at a shoe repair place they have it, uh, if you need to get some. And uh, it's just pure oil. It's made from the bones of animals. They press the bones. It's actually made like they used to do the whale oil by pressing the bones. So, um, but it's a great product that's been around for many years. Like I said, anybody that does saddle work or uh, leather work, they're very familiar with it because that's what you use um, 
with your harnesses and all of that stuff. Okay, so you're going to open up your basket like this and there's a couple of places that are really important to catch and that is we're going to take our dropper input like one or two drops of oil each place that the hinge drops into the rim. Okay? And then you're just going to let it sit there for a few minutes and then take a paper towel and let, get the ac excess away. Okay? And then if, if it doesn't look like you can get in there really good, come this direction. And again, just drop a drop on each spot and let it sit there for a few minutes. Just go away and forget about it for a while. And then come back and wipe it off. Wipe if there's any leftover, wipe it off with a paper towel. But just a drop or two, that's all it takes. Not much. I will warn you, Neat's foot oil might make your leather turn a little bit darker, but that only means that it's oiled. Now, when are you going to do this? When you get the, your bag out for the season, okay? Do it then. And then when you get ready to put it away, do it again. Two times a year. That's all you need. And what that'll do for you is help maintain that leather. It doesn't mean that your hinges are going to last forever, but I guarantee you it'll make them last longer because they're not going to dry rot. When I get a basket into repair or anybody does, usually it, the leather part is all dried out and that's what makes it break real easy. And that's it. How about, how easy is that?